The Nigerian Labour Congress National Delegates Conference, which held on February 9 through to 11 in this year 2015, was an opportunity for the leadership of the Congress to review its activities and set an agenda for the benefit of the working class population. Now, they say that conference was largely successful, but for the matter of one little election. Yes, members of the Congress were due to elect national officers to run the affairs of the Central Labour Organization for a term of four years. Well, hello and welcome. This is 60 Minutes with me, Angela Jitumobi. Thank you for joining me on the program today. As of January 6, 2015, we knew who the three candidates would be for the presidency of the Nigerian Labour Congress. Joe Ajayro, the General Secretary of the Nigerian Union of Electricity Employees. We had Achese Igwe, the head of NUPENG, that's the Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers. We also had Waba Ayuba, who came on the platform of the Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria. Now, bearing in mind that the positions of Deputy and Vice President of the Congress were elected unopposed. Today, we have two men who claim to have won that election and are both factional presidents of the Labour Congress, Joe Ajayro and Waba Ayuba. Complaints about that election were many. There were allegations of sharing of money to delegates at the venue of the conference's opening session. There was alleged fraud characterized by ballot papers. There was manipulation of the process to favor a particular candidate allegedly. There was violence and many say failures on the part of certain committees in preparing for that election. So is the failure of that election process a direct result of a lack of a clear ideology in the NLC as it is configured today? Join me after the break as I count down 60 minutes with Joe Ajayro, the General Secretary of the National Union of Electricity Employees and factional president of the Nigeria Labour Congress. Welcome back. Welcome, Mr. Jairo. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. So let's start from here, because I'm a woman. 16 posts were to be contested in that Labour Congress election, but only one woman reportedly taking part in that election. So I'm looking at the Labour Congress now that, are you guys shutting the door against women, especially if the ILO is encouraging that more women should come into positions of authority in the trade unions? I think two women participated. To a very large extent, we left the position of uh, S-official for women. But that did not in any way stop them from picking form for any other office. Besides, there were two positions equally reserved for them at the National Administrative Council of Congress. The National Women Leader and the Deputy are automatic members. So by the time you add it to the two S-official, you're going to have about four. Going into that election, there were three of you. Yourself, Achese Igwe, represent from Nupeng, and Waba Ayuba. Mm -hmm. What happened? Did the three of you actually go to the ballot? At the end of the day, two of us went to the ballot. Um, circumstances that were not too clear. Igwe Achese stepped down the day before. Who did he step down for? Was it to your advantage? Yeah, clearly, because there were certain principles guiding that election and yes. the way we do things before. There was a meeting by um, the 40 something unions in Congress that uh, after these eight years of the public sector, that's where Abdouahi Duma came from. The power base goes to the private sector, you know, because Adam Soshimola was from the private sector. He finished eight years. There were some other people from the private sector whom he couldn't hand over to. He said, we have to balance it. Today. So it's like a zoning yeah, arrangement yeah. as well. Yeah, we probably do it based on geographical consideration, you know, so there were a lot of Arabo, Fidel said they all these guys from the south here. And they said no, you know, mm -hmm. let me get to down there. Yeah. So these are some of the considerations that equally came again on board. And then all the unions agreed that the private sector should have a slot. Initially it was difficult between me and uh, Ibu Achese to harmonize on who goes for the private sector until that moment when he 
stepped up. And then that was the consensus until the eve of the closure of nomination forms, when we suddenly realized that Ayuba Waba had picked form. And he was present at the meeting where all some, these arrangements yes, were, were, made. were made. So on the basis of that, we entered into the election. If the constitution of the Labour Congress yeah. stipulates something, you are all gathered there. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be men of honor yeah. leading the trade unions. And there's a clear breach in terms of a time limit imposed upon a nomination. Why did all of you sit there and accept it? It wasn't a question of accepting it. In the first instance, the two offices of deputy president and vice president we are returned unopposed. But we had an outgoing president yes, uh, who believes that he can have his way. So at the floor there, he took nomination. The people that were disqualified by the credentials committee were cleared at the floor. For you to do that, because they were disqualified based on you know, constitutional provisions. And then for you to do that, there should have been an amendment of that section of the constitution. Yes. But as we talk today, those constitutions are still there. Provisions are still there. Are still there. So the basis for clearing them was maybe for the outgoing president to have his way. Then maybe when you say have his way, he has his candidates. Yeah, he has his candidates that he needed to impose on us mm. based on so many considerations, you know, okay. you know that were based okay. on to him. Before we go forward, let's just clarify. So the former NLC boss, Omar, yeah. he is from the public sector. Yeah. The arrangement was that the public sector will hand over yeah. to the private and sector, sector and you are clearly alleging now that he was interested in interested. who became yeah. the next president from the private yeah, sector yeah. based on mm. a lot of factors the person he was favoring yes. happened to be the treasurer so you see the treasurer and the president working together and in one of such instances was a case of maybe millions being paid into the accounts of some of us who were in school. And I knew I decided to return there for three million naira that was mm. paid into my account. Yes. So it was alleged that, uh, oh, this guy is coming to prove us. Mm. So there was need. For you not to partake yes, in that. Yes, there was need for somebody to, you know, who knew the process, who was yes. part of it, to block it. So that was the most critical point for them. So it's like anything must be done. To, to make sure that fund. you don't come and in. Secondly, the scandal of Chris Lally, the land housing scandal, the person he proposed to take over, and that's the treasurer, mm. happened to be the chairman of that committee, the one that is rocking us a lot. Mm. And there were equally issues of the Labour City Transport, about three billion naira was gotten from the Urban Development Bank. So if you watch the conference, people were saying the conference was successful. Yes. There was demand mm. for answers on mm. the accounts, yes, financial statements. Questions you know of what happened if we had growing concern you know in labor city transport what is the state of that yes. that answer was not given so it okay. was like a mock thing they were shouting down the people who raised mm. such issues mm. now the issue of chris lally that i want you to talk about this housing issue yeah, what yeah. is the story well the story is that some people in nlc had a deal with the chris lally md that they were going to provide lands and the man was going to build houses for workers, for workers nationwide you know so they now ask people to pay a certain percentage at about 15 percentage including buying forms for such those who are interested yes so people started subscribing at that point i think almost two billion naira was was involved, raised was raised mm. and there was no land till now till now no, no allocations have been made no no land you know they said didn't have land the man didn't have land and then they started withdrawing the money started spending it and the problem was that the nlc president i was saying his signatures were signed and the man said they would do those monies together so it was when this issue blew up that some yeah. of us raised questions because some of us didn't even know uh, how the man came in and then we demanded for explanation for the nsc president and he wasn't happy with some of us so oh. they tried to distract attention to say they are going to call they are going to report to the sss and we were mm -hmm. asking questions how could he sign a signature and then what was the mandate given to the bank mm. is it that one person must sign or two or people two people how can somebody withdraw as much as maybe a hundred and something million without an alert how can somebody withdraw such an amount without bank asking you to confirm if nlc is in partnership with an individual who keeps the check you know so these questions brought credibility question to congress mm. and these subscribers were protesting every day in fact there was one case that 
uh, were to have interaction with some political parties and they came there to disrupt it. So we had this credibility problem as far as the outgoing president was concerned and we needed to <clears throat> bring him to book. So those tendencies in the movement who were asking questions, mm. there was need to stop them. So when some of them even emerged unopposed after filing of nomination, he refused. And like a mob thing, you know, some people were mobilized either from mm. based on certain primordial sentiments. If you ask questions, what happened to them, they say no, 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 mm. no, no. So the conference was so rowdy, mm. you know, that the account, the financial statement did not contain so it was on the basis of that that we entered into that election, election before the electoral fraud aspect of it came up. Some people say perhaps it was because you've been very vocal, you know, in issues to do with the unbundling of PHCN, that perhaps the government of the day and the powers that be were not too enthusiastic about seeing you leading the Labour Congress. They perhaps saw you as somebody who would be a troublemaker and a thorn in the flesh of the government going forward. Yeah, I think those people are very correct because the government of the day did not hide their hatred on me. And if we go back to history, in 2011, when I wanted to be deputy president, the government of the day, through the DGSSS, said they don't want me at the venue of the, the conference. Yes. And this is somebody contesting for election, you see. You don't want to see him. When they say that, the conference couldn't start till around 12 in the afternoon when the workers say no way. So I emerged from where I was hiding then because there was an attempt to keep me out of circulation. So and the workers came in by f and moved me in by force. And that election took place. I emerged. So between that time and now, it has been on. So this time around, they didn't hide it as well. And they, they would not want me there. You know, so various efforts to neutralize that didn't work. So the first election, if you watch the trend, we discovered that there were ballot papers. So let's talk about that first election mm -hmm. now, because the National Union of Textile and Garment Workers, for instance, say disrespect for the rules guiding the election as set out in the NLC constitution. Also, the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria are demanding an investigation into the alleged printing of multiple ballot papers mm -hmm. with different serial numbers. So, take us through the process. What is this thing about the requirements of the Constitution of the Labour Congress? For instance, start with eligibility. Were you eligible? Was Waba Ayuba also eligible to participate in this election? Well, the issue is that so many of the documents now, since he moved into NLC Secretariat, may have yes. been doctored. But in terms of eligibility, as at the time of this election, Ayuba Waba was not eligible. Why now, do you I say mean, that? What do I mean? Yes. The Ayuba Waba's tenure as president of the Medical and Health Workers Union mm -hmm. expired by March 2013. And now, right. the constitution of the union, medical and health workers union, is that you must leave office at the expiration of your tenure. But if for any reason there will be change date, yes. it can't exceed three months. March 13, 2013, yes, if March. he was due to leave, he had the grace of another three months. Yes, yeah, clearly. That, April, line, May, June. Fine, in line with their constitution. And yes. just like any other, most of the unions. Yes. But he stayed back. Why did the union allow him to stay? Even if the union had amended their constitution, which they didn't do, for him to have another term, it wouldn't take retroactive effect. He wouldn't be the beneficiary of such oh, an amendment. Yes. But he just stayed there and said he would not leave, he would not call for conference until this point in time. And now some members of his union went to court, and the case is still pending in NIC, National Industrial, Industrial court, court, over his eligibility to say, hey, by the time you feel from as president of this union, you have ceased to be, to be president, president of this union. So, but the courts were still playing over it mm. until that issue came up. And yes. hurriedly now, he had conducted the election. Yes. After he... Yes. Uh, have they amended their constitution? No, still under the same constitution. Mm. On the 28th of April, uh, he hurriedly, maybe since maybe he has achieved what he was looking for, Atlanta, he hurriedly organized a conference and said he has handed over. So if that is even correct, yes. you now have a president of NLC who is not a commander of any union. In other words, even if you become the president of the NLC, right. you retain the platform from which, which you, you came. came. Yeah. So you are still the general secretary of, of the NUE. Fine. You don't stop being no, the secretary. No, no, no. That's the only way, you know, if there's any problem, you can have influence on that union mm -hmm. to participate. And that was the crisis we had because 
Abdul Hayy Duma's first term, he was still president. So his second tenor, he was not. So even as at the time of that election, he wasn't even a delegate of the teachers, you know, to that conference. So you see somebody who is answering NLC president without a constituency. That's a lot of impunity going yeah, on it is. there. It is. And now, majority of the people there, you have one or two people who have even retired from service, who emerged. He's not working again. He has served for maybe 35 years of service. Yes, and when, when you retire from service, can you still be a, a member of a union? You can't. So where are you paying your dues from? What is the benefit in this union? Is there something well, special? Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe some people have refused to go home or do other things. And then they use NLC as a, an old people's home where to yes. retire to. Because there are a lot of them, some even doesn't have six months to retire. Yes. Some have retired. You know, and they now take positions in, in NLC. There. Now, what that means is that you have a docile NLC because they don't control any troop. They, they don't have anyone behind no, them? No, no, no. And that is part of the things we experienced in the last three, four years. They don't have any troops. They're still in the executive. Yeah, the do, 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 do they get invited to events? Well, I'm trying to see what can be the benefit. Well, I, I mean, like the presidential inauguration. Will they be invited there? Maybe those are the perks. Well, even if you invite people to presidential inauguration, I don't yes. see it as a benefit. <laughs> I don't at all. I don't see that benefit. Unless there are some other areas they are benefiting from, which yes. is not known to some of us. So that's why Achese Igwe was saying that he blames Waba and the Medical and Health uh, Workers Union. Uh, for he calls it desperation to assume the post at, at all costs. Cost. Mm -hmm. Because if the president of Nigeria today says he's not leaving, a day after four years, the trade unions will be on the street to say you must go. But here is a president of an industrial union in Nigeria, two years after, he said he will not go. And he now wants to use that force to dubiously and send to use another that position. platform, yeah, to, that platform. To, to, to benefit. Yes. yes, but on his own side, he is blaming the credentials committee especially representatives he says of nupeng and your union electricity for doing em what? employees for being difficult and not recognizing the independence of the medical and health workers union if those people are happy with him to continue being there it doesn't follow if i go a bit historical with his union, yes the president of that union before him was Irena who later grew to become SSG to Niger state government. So an assumption of that position, there was... He dropped out. Yes, he dropped out, and there was a conference. And in that conference, Ayuba Waba mobilized the leadership of his union from the north to say this man has finished only one term, that the other term must be finished by the north. On the, that premise, he emerged to finish one term that Irena could have finished. So he finished that one term, then took another term. Now, if you look at it, next tenor he took is now the top ten if he was calculating this regional balance. Yes. Now, when he finished that second ten again, which is giving about eight or seven years, he now decided to keep quiet. It's not like going to amend constitution, mm -hmm. you know, saying give me another. So these two years, on what platform, what basis do you calculate it? Yes. Because if members of your union want you to remain because there's nothing like that there would have been constitutional amendment to give you another term of yes. four years yes although people will still complain that it's an operation that you should not be the beneficiary of it so that wasn't the issue now that they have called for election people have emerged so far from it is a level of impunity and dictatorial policies because that brings us to even the issue of selection of delegates the last nlc election. okay we'll take a break now when we come back you we'll tell us about the delegate system in use in the Labour Congress. They allege, for instance, that unions rush to quickly pay monies um, into their coffers of the NLC so that they will get more delegates. I don't know how that works. But join us again after the break. It is difficult to respond to that question. Angela, that's a great question. Great question, Angela. Angela, that is a very great question. That's a great question. Okay, that's a great question. question. Yeah, very good question. That's a good question. This is an interesting question you put. 60 Minutes with Angela. Again, answers to every question you always wanted to ask.
Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it's 60 Minutes with me, Angela Jitmo. Be on my hot seat today. Joe Ajayro is the General Secretary of the Nigerian Union of Electricity Employees and factional president of the Nigeria Labour Congress. So tell us about this delegate system. I found out that they said just before the election, unions were rushing to pay in millions of naira into the accounts of the Congress to boost the number of union delegates to the conference. First question is, how does that work? How does the money you pay in determine the number of delegates you will have? And the second question is, is there no stipulated time? Is there no cutoff point that stops you from further paying in money to the NLC coffers? Is it forever and ever you can continue to pay even up to the day of the election? Well, I think the NLC constitution that midwife the last conference uh, was clear that every one million uh, will earn you one delegate. After compulsory five delegates on basis of equality, Every union has compulsory five delegates. Yeah. And that was end in 2011. Uh, it was my union that sponsored that motion because we discovered that you may disco may, a union may not have pay up to one million mm -hmm. and they will not be able participate. to participate. So, and we have 43 unions yes, in the NLC. Fine. So and you may have only one union paying that even 20, 30 unions will not be able mm -hmm. to match. Mm -hmm. So by the time my union sponsored that motion with the amalgamated union, for a basic 10 delegates and the conference in session reduce it to five right now if you now have five five people from even 40 unions it is such a number that can influence the voting yes, yes. so it, it was every one million for one delegate now the other question on whether the time is endless mm. no every payment must end three months before the election and now there is this culture of uh, unions even not paying for four years until the election years. time yes. so some of them try to pay you know before that stipulated time pay all the arrear yeah and it is calculated now but i think there's a problem somewhere and which is the weakness of nlc there is no data and statistics as to to say this you know has 50 members mm. and if they have 50 members this is their earning this is what will translate to 10 percent maybe unions pay the payment which they were alleging some of the unions didn't even pay up to but because they were paying hurriedly like in so, my own case in 2014 what i paid in january was the same thing i paid in november when the uh, date ended but there was areas built in based on maybe if i i was paying five five million and suddenly maybe through psm privatization yes i now have probably 15,000 casuals that are now members. I now have salary increase. I now have review of check off system. If I was paying 5 million, it's kind of remain that 5, five million, million now. So, but then it's left for NLC to find out what happened because ordinarily we have audited account mm -hmm. annually. And in 2009, I was summoned by the 10 Registry of Trade Unions to say that I was underpaid based on the report of the audited account yes. from my union. So 10% of it, you know, they were expecting that I should have paid it, which I didn't. Mm. So after that threat, some of us started to up. pay up. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know whether it would be an offense to pay high or to pay less. Okay. And we also have to talk about this ballot papers thing because the Maritime Workers Union wanted investigation. They said multiple ballot papers with different serial numbers. Explain what happened uh, with the ballot papers to us. No clear statement has come out from the NLC Secretariat up to this moment. Because I was the target and the fire the main victim. Why that election was disrupted was when people dictated that you know the pattern was different. It's like having one booklet for yeah. every delegate. And in that booklet, you see a different ballot paper written Joe Ajero. You see a different ballot paper written Ayuba Waba. As you move on, you see in the same booklet Ayuba Waba written in two or three. But how many for you? One. Shouldn't it be two, two, or three? No, three? it shouldn't even be two, two. Every booklet should have contained one, one. Assuming that is to be the pattern. And you are supposed to tick. If you tick Joe Ajero yes. in my own ballot paper, and maybe somebody wants to tick Ayuba Waba, and he sees two, he will tick two. He will tick two in and, the same and, booklet. And, and drop the two. And drop the two, fine. In the same booklet. Now, what that means is that he is scoring two votes already from oh, one delegate. One person yes. uh, voting twice. Fine. Why Joe Ajero is scoring one? And when we did further investigation, we discovered that even the ones 
carrying Joe Ajero. There were no serial numbers. If a ballot paper has no serial number, it's void. Fine. Which means if this was dictated at the point of collation, those ones without serial numbers would have been disqualified. So first of all, one person is voting twice Fine. for the other person. Fine. Then even the one voting the once for you, no yeah, serial, no number. serial so number. Assuming the number happened to be higher than the mm -hmm. number of delegates, mm. the ones without serial numbers would have been withdrawn as fake ones. As the reason for the discrepancy. Fine. So and that could have created another problem. And then there was protest, massive protest, as you, some of you saw, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, people were saying shame to labor whatever, but that is not the issue. The issue is that a fraud was dictated, and some people, you know, highlighted that fraud and said this won't continue. Now, I also only said it was, it was printers there. Was that the reason for the collapse of the first election? Yeah, no, that was the main reason. You know, because when those things were detected? Yes, because the report was coming on and on mm -hmm. that this man is having double ballot papers inside a booklet inside a booklet so it got to a level that about 10 people during who are my delegates now saw it the same time and they moved to the returning officer and the chairman of credential committee because before those who reports he would take it and replace it but those who knew the intention would not report to him that they have to mm. you know they will, they will, they will utilize it and put it there so at that point the information had gone around that that was the situation so about 10 people got in the same time. So they now confronted him. He wanted to change. They said, no, no, no. That was how they started. Okay. So the first one collapsed. Then the second election took place. Yeah, the second election. Did it take place in your opinion? Was there an election? There was an election, but the result was the main issue. Now, but build up to that election, there was a protest in Omaha. It was in the process of selecting delegates. Yes. Some of the unions, you know, with leadership, from outside even the south selected their delegates from outside the south south is southwest is that illegal under the constitution well, i think it's illegal because even the nlc allocating delegates to unions was based on their financial contribution now you know should have equally done so based on but now the medical and health you know the civil service union in particular made sure no delegate came from the southeast since i is from the southeast even in the southwest they made sure Maybe they gave them one one delegate. Maybe Lagos Medical Health gave them one delegate. Meanwhile, Medical Health was having 520 something delegates, and Kano had about 60 something delegates. Now Lagos one delegate. Now what is the basis? Because and these delegates are supposed to be spread across, across the 36 fine. states. God bless you. So that wasn't the issue. So there was protest in Enugu. There yes. was protest in Omaha. There was protest in Abuja to the NLC Secretariat, and they said they were going to look into it. It was not corrected. Now, the, the pensioners, you know, at the gate of Diego Square, stopped the delegates from the southeast. There was the president of the electricity pensioners, you know, old Mr. Barney. He was a delegate in the previous election. He came there to vote. They withdrew his tag, stopped him. The other chairman from the railway, you know, they stopped him. So it was that, that was a policy, you know, to stop them because maybe if they are from the southeast, they are going to vote for Algeria. But we still moved into the election because we had done our homework very well accreditation carried out but even the pensioners you know delegates their leadership having removed these ones from that area now wrote at the back of their tax the names of Ayuba Waba and his group so while voting they were just looking at it there and, and taking, taking the names and taking the names so but we didn't equally protest the voting actually took place a result came when the sorting came it was clear i won it was congratulation all over the agents congratulated my agents where is this factional thing coming well, that from is, is this point now that yes. i'm trying to hit that yes so at that point calls were made to the power that be you know, i'm trying to link it up to and they said no no way if it's a zero no way now my agent insisted that let us count this first they said no we were not going to count it and my agent said even in modern election, you'll be hearing the sorting mm. is done openly. You'll be hearing Atiku Buhari, Atiku Buhari, and we're in Eagle Square. Before you finish the sorting, you know, people, people would have, have known an idea yes. of, the, uh, of the winner. They said no. Now they said they were going to pick bids from Muse Market. This bid, so that if you call Jerry, they drop mm. one, whatever. The conference shut down for about four hours. For them to go and buy bids bid. that so we can use on fine. the next. They were waiting for fake ballot papers. To neutralize you your know, wing my, my wing and then within that period the power that be mobilized about 300 policemen more who came in with war horses to the venue to that's yeah, to, Eagle to, Square. To, the, yeah, to Eagle Square and stationed them to where my supporters were they were still doing this on how to smuggle the other ballot papers till night came because this NLC election 
took place two days, two nights. Nobody moved. Nobody moved. And for 3,000 delegates, 3,000 votes. That second night, light went off. Was that deliberate? Yeah, it was. When the light went off, then there was attack on my agent. And if you go through some of the major newspapers, you saw him being carried out by a policeman. By the time the light came, in fact, there was something like hanky or pip that was put on his face. While that light was off, he fainted. So within that period, what happened, happened. Now my delegates protested. Now they matched them with police horses, with policemen, police dogs, dispersed all of them. So it was at that point that I stood up with uh, my colleagues to address a press conference there yeah. and left the venue before whatever they said. And when the so-called announcement came, they said that I scored 1,400 and the man scored 1,600 and something. As at the time they were doing counting before yeah. the light went off, my agent had counted 1,538 for you, for me. And total number of votes cast, according to the chairman of the credential committee, yes. was 3,005. And there were 10 void votes, which brings it to 2,995. So now, if I had secured 1538, that at that time counting had not ended. Now, I would tell you clearly that I had a match. But when they now announced this, they announced that I had scored 1,400 and the other person scored 1,600 and something, which is more than the delegates that cast their votes. Going by that figure, 3,005, yeah. 10 Minus void five. votes, yeah. that comes to 2,995. Yeah. If you had 1538, yes. it means he had 1457. If counting had ended. But for Mepoli, their own result. They gave him 1,600 and uh, I think 60 something or so, or 90 yeah. something. So if you add it to the 1,004 they gave to me, it's got that it's even more than even the 1,005 put together. Mm. So this is we are hurriedly done in order to make sure that I will not emerge. They, of course, yeah. I knew the source. So he was declared the winner. Yeah, there. Yeah. At, at After the we had all left, you know, based on all these issues. What is the situation now? Because you are also being called the factional president yeah, of the that, NLC. That, yeah, when that was inconclusive, with what happened? And I was dispersed with my people with dogs, police, and, dogs police, and horses. Yeah. The unions, about 23 of them, you know, met and fixed what we call special delegates conference. A special delegates conference is conference when the other one, if there's any emergency, and it requires every union bringing 10 delegates. Mm. It's not the time that you must bring other 500 or 10. Yes. So, and that conference took place in Lagos, when? where I emerged. The special delegates yeah, conference. conference. Yes. Now, 43 unions make up the NLC. Yeah. 23, 23 participated right. in this special Five conference. conference. About four say they are neutral. You know in this whole process and that for they seem to be trying to reach out to make sure that they bring everyone together, together. yeah yeah so that's the situation we find ourselves okay when did this one hold in lagos yeah a week after the main election in Abuja. okay that's a week after february yeah. 11. yeah since that time we've continued to soldier on but like a day after 24 hours after the abuja carried there was a visit by the Ayuba group to the dgsss a thank you visit and to the Minister of Labor where they say they recognize them. This is Allen to Labor because I'm not sure from the days of Simon to date whether the NLC or Labor visits the TSS. So Labor is not an arm of government. It's not an arm of Minister of Labor. It's not an arm of DGSS office yes. for them to say they recognize them. And they move further to play this out on May Day, we were supposed to use the National Spectrum Solar, and they said orders from above again, the police sealed off the place. Meanwhile, the other groups May Day mm. in Abuja was not disrupted. So that gives you an idea that we will now have two NLC, one by the workers and one by the government. One by the workers yeah, one by the government. Join us again after the break. So what is 60 Minutes with Angela all about? It's not an interview. I like to think it's a conversation between two people, people making the news, people who are in the news, and those who become the news. And the whole idea is to inform, to educate, or to clarify, as the case may be. It is an art getting people to answer the questions that everyone is thinking in their minds. And that's what we try to do on 60 Minutes with Angela. I ask all the questions that everyone's thinking about and no one wants to voice. All the questions you always wanted to ask, you get those answers 
on 60 Minutes with Angela. Every week on this station, 60 Minutes with Angela, getting answers to every question you always wanted to ask. Welcome back, my concluding moments now with Joe Ajayro, the factional president of the NLC. Mr. Ajayro, what if they said to you, you know, for this Congress to move forward, let's not have two factions. One person is already using the official secretariat in Abuja. One person is being recognized by the Ministry of Labor and Productivity. Bury your ambition. Come back and contest in four years, what would you say? Well, the issue is not an uh, issue of ambition. I had run for NLC election before. In 2007, I ran for vice president and, and lost. And Nothing I, happened. I didn't complain. I continued my work mm -hmm. until 2011. In 2011, I moved higher to run for deputy and they marched. So if I had lost in this election, I would have congratulated the other person and mm -hmm. moved on. Because I, I have gotten to a level in the movement that is not all about office. But I feel sad if the role I have played all this while was for the common for the worker. And then the leaders in the labor movement now find collaboration with external influences to say we don't want him. It's sad. If it was expressed then, even all these veterans everybody came together to say Ajiro don't contest. I wouldn't have bothered to contest. But if I had contested and emerged and I saw it and you are bringing impunity into it, then yeah, I need some explanation. Whether it's the same workers that voted for me, if they come, if the same workers say, don't go, mm. I will not vote. I will even retire, you know, from active service. But it's not, yeah. that is not the case. So, and if you say, if somebody tells me, so who is that person that will say, very ambition? Mm. I'm not saying that it's a do or die thing. But I have looked at it, the pictures I've painted to you, even the informal balancing will do not south. Mm. Even the balancing will do private sector, public sector. Even the issue of hierarchy we maintain in the labor movement. Because as at the time of this election, I happen to be the deputy president of the NLC. And historically... You should naturally move yeah, up. No, historically. And then Ali Shiroma was deputy to Hassan Somono. He became president of the NLC. So you were the deputy president yeah, the deputy. of the NLC? Yes, I was. Now, uh, Adam Soshomole was deputy to Pastor Bafiaro. And he took over. Abu Wahid Umar was deputy to Adams. And he took over. So in no time in the history of NLC had we this containers hierarchy or whatever. And these were some of the issues that were considered mm. and the emergence. You know, maybe somebody with impunity displayed it this way. So that yes. is why it's not about whether I'm president of NLC or not. Mm. That's not the issue. And if we don't investigate this, unless the same government are going to come up openly to say, yes, we did it. You know, not to say that he won election. That's my problem. This election must be investigated. Now, after investigation, we can discuss other issues. The way forward. Yes, it's important. Mm -hmm. But to wave it aside is not the best way to go. I can't have you here and not talk about the state of electricity. I mean, I remember yeah. interviewing you at least twice before on this thing, and you always warned that um, bringing in these investors who didn't have the experience would result in where we are today. Why is the electricity situation so bad? Well, if you remember those days, I sounded a note of warning, and yes. I said Nigerians will speak last, that I was not going to talk again. Since that time, almost two years now, I was not talking mm. and the situation is clear even when the private sector people came with the mindset of sacking my people doing this yes i restrained myself from fighting them back if i had fought them the way i should by now they would have been attributing the problem to sabotage from people like you from people like me that the unions because they didn't want them they are sabotaging them so if you watch i love them and i i could remember mentioning that what we are going to experience will be private gains public disaster Private gains, yes, public disaster. Public disaster. Yeah. So, so the, the private sector people, even as we are talking now, are going laughing to the banks. Yeah. How can they be laughing to the because, banks? If there is no because, electricity to sell. Yeah, but you, you are paying your bill. Sorry. They don't give people supply. They go and take mm, the, the bill. The maintenance fee. Apart from one, that's for those that have a prepaid meter. meter. Yes. They still cut those ones from them. But majority of the people is by estimation or whatever means. So this month, 
they have targeted whether it is two billion or three billion. So whether they whether you have light or not, has issue. They must make that two billion. One, one. Now let's move further. The minister was trying to sound a note of warning to the incoming government not yes. to reverse the process. And I laughed because in most countries of the world where they are tempted to privatize electricity, even where electricity is available, they have reversed. It hasn't worked. It has not. Some have even gone into buyback. And I could remember stating all these things to Mr. President. President Jonathan. Yeah, oh no one. Why has it failed in all those countries? Is it because it's a public service? The private investors you are seeing today, they don't even have money. Nigerian banks are in their crisis because of money borrowed to these investors. To, now, to these power yes, investors? Yes, I'm saying it clearly. And the basis for privatization in the first instance was that it was going to attract foreign direct investment, FDI. And now you borrow money from Nigerian banks to buy Nigerian utility companies. So which one dollar came in? So no FDI ah, came in? No. Nah. So that's the situation. Now even the little money they borrowed, at what percent interest rate did they borrow the money? You and I will service the interest. And now they are paying, repaying every month. What they are using to repay, are they going to use it to replace transformer when they're expected to make profit? Because a private sector man's interest is profit maximization. Now for government, January to December, they cannot declare profit for PSC. Government can have budget, you know, to construct new lines. That is not the situation now. And the minister was talking of gas. Since I was born, the issue of gas vandalism has been there. Were these things not taken into consideration? Didn't the investors know about these challenges? I mean, didn't they do that's, any that's due question, diligence? That's the question. But the, most importantly is, who are the investors? Do they have capacity? Now, if you are talking of capacity, and I raise this because the policy that you must have technical competence. Yes. You must have managerial ability. And then the financial muscle. If somebody has gone to borrow, you can't call that financial muscle. All the people <coughs> running them now, I'm not sure where they have run power company before. Before. So those are the kind of people. But even at that, who are the people? Nigerians should ask questions. Who are the owners of these new companies? That immediately after privatization, the federal government started giving them money. In January, February, the new investors were given 213 billion naira. That's January and February 2015. 15, you know, they were giving money by government. So I sold my house and I'm paying the person that bought it. And I had to paint it also when I've sold my house. So who are the real owners? So the question of who are the real owners yes. is a question the Bari government must ask. What were they giving the money for to improve supply yes. or demand? Probably. The transmission lines that had loopholes and... and uh, the transmission you know. lines, they concessioned it to Monotoba under a concessionary agreement. Mm. And Monotoba, I told them then, even when I got across the workers there and they say they are not buying any company in Nigeria. But the Monotoba you are seeing here is like a consultancy firm that comes with that name. Now even at that, yes. Monotoba, Canada, is owned by a local government, just like Osho, the local government. That's the people come to run the electricity of the country, of the whole country. In fact, it's, it's sad what is happening inside. So it's a question of allocating. This man, you take Ikeja. Mm. This man, you take Abuja. Mm. This man, you take here. It's not based on the capacity of these people to run the sector. And between that time and now, government is still investing. To who? This question must be addressed. Now, it is easier for even government to borrow at okay. lower interest rates yes. than the private man to borrow. We gave them all this analysis. And you don't even privatize a commodity that is not available. The world standard in terms of electricity is that for every 1 million people, there must be 1,000 megawatts. Now you have 460 or 70 million Nigerians, which as of today, 2,700 megawatts. So we're never going to have no. steady electricity? Unless we work. But not that any of these people will build a power plant. Now, are you going to build a power plant for four years? You can't recoup it in 25 years. That is not the nature of Nigerian investor. No investor, no businessman in Nigeria starts a business that he will make profit after 20 years. No long term. Ah, in some of these advanced countries started thinking of either reform, privatization, as a post-industrialization concept. Already, they have achieved stability. There is even power available. Here, we don't have power. The 4,000 we could have used as base power. Government retained this 4,000. Don't allow it to go down. Now, since you have licensed over 25 companies, let them generate so that we add it to the 4,000. Yes. Now, you sold the 4,000 to the people. 
and all this bill, everything is running around this 4,000 4, megawatts. So is that, the, is that privatization? Is that investment? Everything, they say they have 18 companies now, they have unbundled to 18. Still on 4,000. Still on 4,000. So which type of calculation is that? It doesn't add up. If they say they have 20 companies now from the former NEP, yes. it is revolving around 4,000. And today is about 2,000 something. It's not like they have companies that are building power stations. Mm. That and that own, very that soon we will have 10,000. And most of the power plants they have built all these years are political power stations. Now you build a power station in Papalanto and from Baesa, you build a gas, gas pipeline, pipeline to that place. And then maybe you line up policemen from Papalanto or Motorshow to Baesa so that the vandals will not break the pipeline. And these are gas power stations which should have been built at the source Around of Around where the gas Even is. if you build it in Baesa, the same time the person in Baesa is getting supply, the time the person in Sokoto and Lagos will be getting supply. When there is a source of power in terms of hydro, the three major power stations are in Niger State, hydro power station, Shiroro, Kainji, Jeba, because there is a source of water source there. Now, we could have looked at that. Mambila visibility study has been completed in Mambila. Mambila can give us 4,000 megawatts, one power plant, by through water. Zungeru can give us 1,000 megawatts one power plant through water nobody will tell you that they are building pipelines pipeline. yes now ask yourself let them tell nigerians how much they are carrying out away in the name of you know repairing the vandalized pipelines let them talk you know how much is going to that racket i don't think they are serious because even the coal deposits in enugu kogi benue that region yes. nobody has even built one power station that is coal fired 40% of power in the whole world is coal dependent. And last few weeks they were talking of uh, nuclear. That one I had to come forcefully to say, <laughs> hey, this one should not work. Because even advanced countries, Japan, Germany, are shutting down all their nuclear stations because of the cancer aspect, because of the disaster. Yes. It is taking millions of lives. And Nigeria, with no organized response to uh, mm -hmm. uh, such uh, emergencies, emergencies yes. you know, they were trying to sign agreement with Russia at the eve of the end of this administration. How do you do such a thing to bring poison and toxic to us? So it is at this point that some of us will come up again to say, no, you can't kill everybody. Continue what you are doing. So for those Nigerians who are saying that we are the problem, let them enjoy privatization. You know, because it got a level, they say, because his people who doesn't want to lose their jobs, who will work there? Human beings will work there. Yes. If there is no electricity, I will suffer it. Other Nigerians will suffer it. But as somebody who has been in the sector, who has done studies in all this process in some other countries of the world, and I tried to say one or two things. They cheapened it. The so-called investors went after some of us. Look, the NSO was used for privatization. The Nigerian soldiers were used. They took over all naval offices. They were looking for their The SSS were involved. The civil defense, even up to customs. There is no arm of government or the military that were not used to forcefully carry out this process. So and I think those ones are equally enjoying the, 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 the no electricity now. So if I was, you know, blackmailed, mm. if I was criminalized mm. based on that, for over two years now, I've been looking at them. So at the end of the day, we'll know who is actually a real patriot in this country. Time is coming for us to know that. Thank you very much, Mr. Jairo, for yes, coming on the program. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Angela Ajitumobi. See you next time. <laughs>